Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. What did, what did the woman used to say, Minnie Pearl? Howdy! Dee. Live on iHeartRadio, it's the In Wheel Time car talk show. Coming up, we're going to talk with Mike Quincy at Consumer Reports on SUVs you should avoid. Juicy. <laughs> I got to drive the 2023 <laughs> Ford Bronco Sport, and I'll give you my look at that. Uh, later on, we're going to have uh, Conrad talking about the cruise in calendar and this week in auto history. And later, we talk with uh, Ford F 150 marketing manager about the updated 2024 model that's just been displayed for all to look at. Plus, we'll also bring you the stories making automotive news headlines this week. It's all just ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. And we start this morning with the uh, United Auto Workers strike that uh, started, uh, let's see, Friday Yesterday. morning at midnight. Yeah. yeah. And a historic gambit. Nearly 13,000 hourly workers at three large assembly plants went on strike against the Detroit Three early Friday in what UAW President Sean Fain has framed as a righteous fight against the rich to get better wages and benefits for the working class. Never in the UAW's 88-year history has it attempted a simultaneous strike against Ford Motor Company, General Motors, and Chrysler, now part of Stellantis. Union plans to expand the work stoppage at yet-to-be-determined intervals to ratchet up pressure on the automakers. A novel tactic Fain has branded a stand-up strike to mirror the sit-down strikes of the UAW's early years. This story from Automotive News. The walkout will immediately halt production of profitable, high-demand vehicles, including the Ford Bronco, the Jeep Wrangler, and Chevy Colorado, and could have devastating ripple effects on suppliers, contractors, dealers, and the broader economy in the coming weeks. So we're going to keep an eye on that Mm -hmm. and uh, give you all of the latest as mentioned. Yeah, hopefully we get to talk a little more about it later. Yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. I've I've got another story. Without raising our voice and without being little, you know, just calm it down. I, I, I have... I have some notes I want to talk about. Okay, well, that's just fine, but we're going to hold that for now. Yes, sir. That's why I asked. Please. Okay. Permission. Consumer Reports is a very popular magazine, and they always uh, have all sorts of things besides, you know, their reviews of washing machines and and all (laughs) sorts of sewing machines. Sewing machines. I like sewing machines. It's educational. But I will tell you what. I think that they do a pretty good job on their automotive reviews Mm -hmm. and uh, the research that they do on them. And uh, with uh, and they drive all of them. Yeah, and they also have uh, places for you and me to comment on the cars, especially if you own one of them. So it joining runs us like a singer. That's it. So joining us now is Mike Quincy from Consumer Reports. Mike, good morning, and thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, and please don't ask me about sewing machines. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I've driven one or two of them in my past a long time ago, but not any longer. But at any rate, uh, this uh, story that you guys have come up with uh, caught my attention, as well as Mr. Mars over there. And uh, the story really is about the popular and not so popular or well-received or uh reviewed level and your testing has proven some of these uh, right on and uh, some of the most popular mid-sized sedans uh some of the most popular suvs to avoid and why so i'll let you start where do you want to start well basically looking at at this list of this story at consumerreports.org uh, we're looking at, at vehicles that did well in our testing, have average or better reliability, as well as good scores in our surveys for owner satisfaction. We also have a criteria for a vehicle to be recommended and to be kind of like on the buy list is standard automatic emergency braking at highway speeds, blind spot warning, and rear cross traffic warning. So, you know, the standards are high, but, but you kind of set it up real well because there's a number of vehicles that are, you know, you know air quotes popular, but... Um, that high sales does not necessarily mean that it's a good car. 
Oh, and don't we know it? <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, and we agree with you wholly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you remember uh, way back when the the Chevrolet Cavalier was one of the top selling cars of all time, or at least for a, a whole bunch of, and it was a terrible car. So just because everyone bought it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good buy. It was in the class of the, it, the Dodge it, Neon. It means it has good marketing. Yep. Yeah, good marketing, or it may be shaped just the right way, or offer the best colors and go. Or was, oh, I really like that. It had that. the biggest rebate as a percentage <laughs> of price. There you go. It had a, oh yeah, See, I was, that's, that's what I was going to say. Probably heavily rebated and, and low cost, and, and that that's you know that's what drives uh, an, a lot of consumers' decision. It's it's solely based on on cost and at consumer reports. We're you're encouraging people to look a little bit deeper than just. Uh, the, 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 the monthly payment. It had yeah. a good coefficient. Uh, yep, exactly. So let's talk about those vehicles that really, they, they made the list, but not in a good way. Those two, those vehicles to avoid. Right. And we're going to start right out with, with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is a very popular two-row SUV, uh, priced around forty to $70,000. Uh, it returned about 20 miles per gallon overall in Consumer Reports testing which is a bit below the, the average of this class. Uh, it has a decent 3.6 liter V6 engine, but uh, in our tests, we found the stopping distances were, were really long. And you know, just to remind you and, and your, your viewers and listeners, Consumer Reports has its own test track, 327 acres in Connecticut, where we can do all of these instrumented testing. And, and so we can look at it in comparison with other SUVs. So really the braking distances were, were, were part of the reason that it's on the avoid list. But even more so than that is below average reliability in Consumer Reports surveys. So um, there, there are other choices out there, and we encourage people to uh, dig a little deeper. Yeah, and one of them being over on the Ford side, and this kind of surprised me. You guys like the Ford Edge. We do. And actually, one of the, the things that, that is notable about the Edge and a number of vehicles that have decent reliability is that the components have really been kind of fleshed out. If there's been any bugs going on with the edge, whether it's the engine transmission or the general vehicle architecture, Ford's probably worked out the, uh, out the problems by then. So with, with about 22 miles per gallon overall, uh, priced between um, like thirty-eight and $47,000, uh, the edge is a, is a very decent buy. I think that, that there's not a, a big demand for this vehicle, which is too bad because it rides well. It has a roomy cabin, uh, above average reliability, and um, it, it really, if you haven't been in an edge in a while, because it's been around a while, it, you should definitely check it out. Well, I will say this, that it, I had somebody yesterday, I got my hair cut. The lady that cuts my hair says, oh, I want that Chevy Blazer. Now, <laughs> I don't know too many people that really are, say, I'll raise my hand for the new Chevy Blazer. When you think Blazer, you think back in the 70s the and the 80s. Yeah. Square body. This is not that. No. This is a crossover SUV. And uh, you guys like it, and you put it under the radar, as you say. Yeah, it isn't as popular as some of the other models. Uh, it gets about 19 miles per gallon overall with, that, with the V6 engine, which is just so-so. But, you know, listen, Chevrolet can, can really get it together when they feel like it. Uh, the Blaze returned above average reliability in Consumer Reports surveys, which is, you know, a, a real credit to, to how they're building this. Uh, easy controls, uh, pretty easy car to live with. And yet, yes, you're right. Uh, all of us talking right now are of the, the era of the Chevy Blazer being the large truck-based and two-door model with the fiberglass cap in the back yep. to take off oh, yeah. and almost make it a convertible. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And now those old things are coming back and pop more popular than they were when they were brand new. It's crazy. And it, it, isn't that crazy? I mean, they become collector cars where back in the day they were just the vehicle that you got in every day and went to work. Well, here's a perfect example of that. That would be the Ford Bronco. Yeah. Oh, Remember yeah. when that came out in the 60s? Oh, my gosh. It was just a little tin thing that is like, are you kidding? And Friend now of mine, they're worth 10 times what they were new yeah. back yeah. then. A friend of mine in high school had one. His dad bought him one. An orange one with a white top. Crazy, crazy, uh, crazy. Nothing in it. Yeah, here's one that uh, this one also surprised me. Uh, one of uh, your three rows to avoid is the Ford Explorer. Now, this one, I think everybody at least knows somebody that had one if they didn't have one themselves. Yeah, I think back in the 90s, Ford really uh, hit a home run with the original Explorer. It helped to build the whole SUV wave that we've been riding for 
you know, over over 20, 30 years or whatnot. And, but, the, but the current Explorer did not do well in Consumer Reports testing, about 21 miles per gallon overall, uh, priced between about thirty-seven and $56,000. Uh, we, we found that, that uh, the Explorer got below average reliability in Consumer Reports surveys. And even more so than that, uh, owners have reported also below average for satisfaction. So not only are they telling us about problems that they're having with their vehicle, they're also saying that we don't, we're not really crazy about it. And they don't always go hand in hand. For example, the, the Jeep Wrangler will usually gets below average reliability, but owner satisfaction is always among the highest in our surveys. So it, it isn't necessarily, well, it's breaking, so people don't like it. That's not always the case. So we would definitely say avoid the Ford Explorer. The next one, the best three-row choice or better, uh, and I find it interesting because you guys liked it, and so did I. I just had it a couple of weeks ago, the Kia Telluride. Oh, my gosh. I think that there's a ton of content in this vehicle for the price that they're asking for it, and I really liked it. You know, once in a while, a, a car manufacturer just gets everything right. Yeah. I don't know what, what it is or how to describe it. I'm sure if you could bottle it and sell it to every car manufacturer, you'd be you know richer than, than Jeff Bezos. But, <laughs> but uh, the, with, with Kia and the Telluride, you're absolutely right. Price between thirty six and fifty seven, fifty three thousand dollars uh, It has about average reliability, which is not outstanding, but it's still good enough to be recommended by Consumer Reports. But the smooth V6 engine, uh, 21 miles per gallon overall, the comfortable, quiet ride. And as you mentioned, you just hit the nail on the head. The, the interior is much nicer than you think it was. You, 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 you sit in the Telluride and you, you think, wow, this must be like an $80,000 car. Exactly. Yep. You'd, be, you'd be surprised at, at just how much you're getting for your money. I, I love the Telluride, and it has been tops and consumer reports ratings for a number of years and, and, and it's a it's a lot to me it's a larger of the suv family it's not one of the the small ones um, right right but 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 it isn't hulking to drive whenever i drive the telluride i think it drives smaller than it is if, if you get my drift i absolutely and I, i'm right on there with you as a matter of fact i liked it so much i'm using it in a magazine article that i just wrote uh, for bay area houston magazine and i put it in the in the article that also shares the Lincoln Navigator. I know it's a stretch, but I'm just saying as far as, you know, the price that you pay for a Navigator and then you pay for a Kia Telluride, I'm kind of leaning toward you the Telluride. You Ford Explorer with what's left over. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ford Explorer, that's it. All right, and the under-the-radar three-row alternative would be the Subaru Ascent. You know, I've not had a Subaru Ascent. Have you had one, Mike? No, no, uh-uh. Yeah. So I, I find it interesting that you guys uh, really kind of like that. Well, Subaru, as as the expression goes, is like the vehicle of New England, or or at least the Pacific Northwest, or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Uh, because all but their sports car is standard all wheel drive, so that goes a long way when the snow starts falling. But what we like about the Ascent is it's twenty two miles per gallon overall. Uh, about average uh, reliability and owner satisfaction. Four-cylinder turbo is pretty responsive. Um, handling is, is okay. I don't really find it that engaging to drive, but seeing that it's a three-row SUV, it, it's probably going to be more like a family vehicle, and maybe that's not high on your radar. Uh, but it's easy controls and just you know, rock-solid Subaru build quality is, is, makes it easy to, to recommend. Price around thirty four dollars to $48,000. Uh, it, it, like I said, it, it is among the, the, the least engaging SUVs for me to drive, but it really has hit home with, with a number of owners because they like it. And Wait. Subaru has a what I call a fanatical fan base. They are the people who drive and own Subarus are, are very loyal to the brand. Well, you know, one of, yeah, the, yeah. one of the things, Mike, that I wanted to mention is the fact that, you know, back in the day when Subaru really got its – mojo together if you want to call it that <laughs> that uh everybody at subaru touted the fact well you know it's a flat four engine it handles a lot better we don't care about handling in an ascent i mean i wouldn't i mean i i get it you know with the engine certainly closer to the ground yeah but uh it's more because who's going to race it nobody that i know of <laughs> and so uh i i mean 
it works well. I guess that it's a pretty reliable engine, but uh, that used to be a big thing, and now not so much anymore. Let's just talk about reliability, I think, is uh, more at top of the list. Well, one of the things I really like about Consumer Reports, you talked about you have your own test track, so everything you guys test is tested on the same facility. So there's right. the comparisons are equal. Um, you know, the vehicles might not be equal, but the road test comparisons are equal. So it's not a matter of, you know, were you testing it that day and it was bad weather, you know, or you were in heavy traffic for whatever reason? No, because you guys drive on that same test. Because the criteria is all the same. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. We, we, you know, we have a lot of lawyers working for Consumer Reports, and they say everything you do has to be defensible. And to make it defensible is when you're testing a group of cars, you do the acceleration runs on the same day. You do the braking tests on the same day. So all of the conditions are the same for all the cars. There's criteria for weather. It can, if it's too cold, we won't test. If it's too hot, we won't test. If it's obviously raining, we can't do dry braking tests. So we're very dependent on the weather, but we have to make sure that the test is repeatable for, for every make and model. Well, and, and you have to pay the attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the other big advantage you have in that, you don't have to worry about where the police are sitting whenever you go out to do that braking test or the acceleration test. Well, it's on their track. You don't have to, See, only, 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 Mars, only Mr. Mars Well, you have to work around that. these yeah, things. He's trying, you know? Yeah, he, he does the well, on-ramp like acceleration test. It's on a closed test, track, Mike. Well, I, 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 listen, I... I agree with Mr. Mars because we just got a, a Ford Mustang dark horse uh, that we rented from Ford. And to, to, to let that pony breathe heavy, yes, you got, you, we take it out on the track and just come back to our desks grinning like a fool <laughs> and thinking, this is better shot of adrenaline than a cup of coffee. Absolutely. Well, Mike, it's great to talk to you, and we really appreciate the insight into the uh, popular SUVs to avoid and what to buy uh, through ConsumerReports.org. And, and we posted that on our Facebook yeah. and social hey, thanks media. Thanks so much. I mean, we, we, we rely on, on, on people to, to support Consumer Reports so we can do the work that we do. Every member, every subscriber, every person that donates to the organization allows us to keep testing and to stay independent. And, uh, and we really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys and getting the word out. Keep on keeping on, Mike Quincy. Next Thanks week so is sewing machines. It. Next week is <laughs> yeah, sewing exactly. machines. We'll have you back. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate <laughs> you bet. Take care. How fun. Uh, yeah. it is. I, always, I need, they, to, do a good I need job. to be a substitute. And like when they go on vacation or something, Guess I need what? to go fill in You have them. to get behind me. <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, I, you got to go I'm, to Connecticut to do it. That's uh, all right. The, I can do that when it's 60 degrees up there. I was just going to yeah, say, it's, it's uh, beautiful about to, weather. About to get in the color change. Well, you know, we, uh, and this is almost going to be a perfect morning for cruise-ins. Oh, yeah. Now, we don't have the events calendar. This is the cruise-in calendar. I have to underscore that. So, this, uh, you know what the difference is? A cruise-in is where you cruise in, <laughs> stay, talk to your friends and show your car, and then you cruise out two or three hours later. That's how that works. Yeah, breakfast in between. Sure. Yeah. Something like that. So this afternoon, starting at 11 a.m., cruising for- That's this morning. For a cure um, at the Wild Peach Market in Brazoria, Texas. There's a $20 entry fee, and that's all going to a good charitable okay, cause. Correct. Good. Uh, Nifty 50s is tonight up off off up off of buckthorn place and it's the g body bash so they're you know they've invited all what's the, a g body would be the oh gosh the, the buick 678 through 86 oldsmobile cutlass buick regal mm -hmm. grand national yep. grand prix that gener that Got size it. of a rear wheel drive yeah. uh, gm midsize cars so they should have a pretty good collection of those if you're into those. If it doesn't rain. Uh, mm -hmm. The Buddha Car Show and Shine is at Cabela's in Buda, Texas uh, this afternoon starting at 6.30 p.m. Was Buda. Wasn't it Buda? It's Buda. Buda. Is it Buda? I think it's Buda. 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 Okay. I, did, I don't know. Well, it's out near the Salt Lake Barbecue. Okay. Well, Mr. Mars has got this smile on his face. Well, I'm just I was thinking, gonna call it some sort Buda, of grin. Buna, Buna, there's Buna, the little town above Silsby. It's Buna, Buda. I mean, you know. It's Boudin. Just change the D to the N in the ear. Uh -huh. Or That's Niederville. East. There you go. 
The Cypress West Houston uh, Vintage Car Meetup is at the Twisty Treat uh, off of uh, Fry Road. Listen, starting I, tonight I at consider myself a Twisty Treat. <laughs> yes, you do. And a Fry Road. The uh, Blue Bonnet Street Riders Cruising uh, is in College Station tomorrow starting at 6 p.m. Also tomorrow uh, starting at 7 p.m. at Freddy's Steak Burger in Katy uh, is an open cruising. And then the, uh, uh, let's see, park and, park, yeah, park and Pizza at Mod Pizza uh, in Katy, Texas. Free pizza? As well. No, I don't think it's free pizza, but um, that's it. Back okay, to you, Don. All, right. all right. Thank you very much. Time now for this hour's car review. I had an opportunity to drive the 2023 Ford Bronco, and I'd like to thank the Ford Motor Company for allowing me to take this car from Chicago O'Hare Airport up to Janesville, Wisconsin, and back over a three-day period of time. Um, and it, it, I was really impressed. Well, let's get into the review, shall we? Mm -hmm. Available trim levels are the base, the Big Bend, the Heritage, the Outer Banks, the Badlands, and the Heritage Limited. The review trim level is the Sport Heritage Limited 4x4. Four four. This is a small SUV. I don't know how they classify small. Yep, it, see? I, see, I would I would consider it a midsize, but whatever. Five passengers, including the driver. Exterior changes from last model year, none. It was all new in 2021. This is the same platform as the Ford Escape, okay? Same platform. It's been around for a number of years. They mm -hmm. just put a different kind of body on it. Exterior features. Paint options with trim levels. Now, the one that I had, the one that I had was a yellow body with white wheels and white grill. It's All like right. you, Don. It's it a is. yellow body with gray it's hair it's and perfect pearly white teeth. Yes. And well, bloodshot eyes. My cousin Steve uh, made fun. He says, are you kidding me? You've rolled the windows down to let people see you inside of this mm -hmm. car pulling into my driveway? <laughs> well, I liked it. So there. Square upright body, unique lighting like the regular Bronco has on the front end, and actually the new F-150 mods are kind of in that same yep. pattern, mm -hmm. and it really does look good. Uh, attractive uh, lighting with short rear overhang. Uh, what I liked? The Very much like you, Don. Overall fun look. Listen, this is a beach buggy all the way. Uh, what could use improvement? Optional wide fender flares for big off-road tires. Just a thought. Hey, Ford, I, I'll give it to you for free. Okay, that mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Interior highlights, sharp-looking dash with an infotainment pod and radio controls. Perfect instrument pod with uh, configurable displays on it. Goat mode goes over any terrain. Mm -hmm. Makes uh, off-road choices easy. Interior well, the interiors range from basic to off-road to high-end uh, with uh, plenty of storage throughout. Uh, cargo trunk room, large for its class. What I liked about it, the Sync 3 infotainment system with the 8-inch touchscreen worked great. Two-liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine that boasts 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque through an 8-speed automatic transmission. Now, that's not a lot of horsepower, but I will tell you, the 8-speed automatic transmission Keeps makes it. Keeps it in the sweet spot. Oh, yeah, and it works well. Yeah. It's not a CVT. It's a real 8-speed. Tow rating, 2,200 pounds. So you can take your little garden trailer and take it to the garden house and bring some dirt back to the house mm -hmm. with no problem. Miles per gallon, 21 city, 26 highway for a combined of 23. I got 25.8 miles per gallon over 258.4 miles. And uh, it was perfect. Uh, power is fit for off-roading. And what could use improvement is nothing. Uh, I drove, obviously, on the interstate highway between Chicago O'Hare and Janesville, Wisconsin, uh, passing a, a closed Belvedere assembly plant that Stellantis closed a couple of years ago. And talk about a sad sight for a car guy mm -hmm. to see a, this ginormous assembly plant that's been in business out there in Belvedere for quite some time, Illinois. It's sad. 
no cars in the parking lot. Well, he no said you also went to Janesville, which GM shut down the truck. Not only there. did they shut it down, but they bulldozed Leveled it. it. Leveled it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, ride and handling. Uh, I did not take it off-road. I would have liked to, and I think it would do well off-road, actually. Uh, nice cross between city and off-road in the handling department. What could use improvement? Just going to throw it out there, but it jacks the price up. Adjustability in the suspension, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but and, and, and it has that, what I'll call that familiar look to the other Bronco. The, the, yes, it does. You know, you could tell that they are quasi-sister and, and you've vehicles. suggested the suspension on other vehicles that you I have and, and so because it's out there and, and they can they and can it make it done. Uh, but then that jacks the price up it's too much. It's very expensive. Yeah, to do. And so I, I don't know for that for that mode to get into that sort of stuff. I don't know if it's worth that. Uh, pricing base trim price base trim price forty four six fifty five. Price is tested forty six two fifty. The the base model price you can get into one for twenty nine two fifteen. Hmm. And it's a two row only. It's a two row, yeah, two row seating. Yep. Uh, competitors, the Mazda CX fifty starts at twenty seven five fifty. The Honda CRV starts at twenty nine five, and the Subaru Outback starts at twenty three ninety five. So. Those are the competitors to it, and that is my review of the 23 Ford Bronco Sport. So, I enjoyed it. Thanks again to Ford cool. for allowing me to drive it up to Wisconsin. Hey, I want to remind you that the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com, and podcasts are available on over a dozen of the most popular podcast outlets available in the world. I added in the world. In the world. Mm-hmm. The Inwheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Stay with us. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 in the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana, stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10, you can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, Nano ceramic window tent or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. The award-winning In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available on the most popular podcast channels out there in 30-minute episodes. We realize our three-hour live show can be difficult to catch in its entirety, so now you can listen every day to a convenient, fresh 30-minute episode. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible, along with a dozen more. In Wheel Time has the most informative automotive guest interviews and new car reviews, along with popular features including Conrad's Car Clinic and This Week in Auto History, along with automotive news headlines. Our live broadcast airs every Saturday, 8 to 11 Central, on InWheelTime.com, the iHeart app, and on YouTube. Be sure to say hello when we're broadcasting from the Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in, Autorama, and the Houston Auto Show, among others. Now, it's easier than ever to hear about all things automotive all week long. 
You're invited to join fellow car enthusiasts in becoming part of the ever-growing In Wheel Time Car Talk family. Don't forget those 30-minute podcast episodes on your favorite podcast channel. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora,